Oh, hey. Oh. <gasps> Keystone Iron City Grinder Manufacturing Co. I was not observant enough, but some of my eagle eyed viewers noticed that the grinding stone was right next to this hand grain grinder, so I went back and got it. Hope they saw the grindstone that I forgot. Well, look at that. Perfect. And they didn't charge me anything because it's made of stone. And they don't work with stone. They're a scrapyard. Only pay like five bucks for it. But hand crank grinders hold a special place in my heart because this is the very first tool. Well, one of the very first tools I ever owned. I must have gotten it when I was like seven or eight. I used the crap out of this little thing. This wheel was actually like that big. But I ground so much stuff as a kid with this. But the main problems with this is that the, the jaw doesn't open enough to go around a 2x4 or 2x of any size. So it would never hurt to my work, when I hooked to my workbench, it wouldn't hook to really anything, saw horses or whatever. It only goes around like medium, like one buys. So that was a bit of a pain because it's hard to mount it to places, still is. And then also the, the, the bolts, they don't make ones this small. So only until just recently that I have a lathe was I able to make like a little bushing so I could fit a new grindstone on it. And now I use it for a super fine Kratex. Well, it doesn't say the grit, but oh well. It's very fine. But now this thing has a normal size spindle bolt thing. It can open up really wide. And I think... Once we uh, clean it out, it'll be more than what, more than uh, smooth. It's just really gummed up, you know. In the course of me cleaning up the workshop, I actually spilled some oil on it, and that re-oilified some of the gunk on here. And this is cleaning up to reveal a beautiful original green paint. So you know what? If the paint's still good, no reason to remove it. Let's restore it by cleaning it off and then putting linseed oil to protect the paint. I think that would be the best option. obviously not original I don't think at least but who knows let's see about fixing that too See, this has probably already been touched before, which is perfectly fine by me. Either way, it was like five bucks or four bucks at the scrapyard, so I'm not complaining. Ooh, cork. Okay. Yeah, that's just really gummed up in there. It's like some lithium grease or something like that. broke. It's probably not the first time that's been undone. There's a set screw right here. I 
And another one. Go. <sighs> Had to go back and forth a few times. And it's kind of gummed up a little bit. I think I'm going to use oil. I should help it not get all gummed up anymore. Ooh. I bet they did try to get fancy and use some like lithium or silicone or something odd when I bet just gearbox oil would work fine. Now I have a hunch that WD-40 will clean this up. You know what? Um, carb cleaner might be better actually. I think I'll go probably go with black next time. Looks better though. A lot better actually. I wanted to upgrade to an enamel paint because I think I might have been able to find a good supplier. It's really difficult to find enamel paint in this area though. Clean these up on the wire wheel. Whatever that white stuff, that grease was, it really got stuck in all the teeth. I think that's what the problem was. These two teeth couldn't interface very well because, well, there's just stuff stuck in there. It's going up really well. I just realized there's a lot of scoring on there and that is doubtless caused that stiffness so I'd best grind that away if I want to put this back in.
there's a little bit of like uh, I guess the term would be galling or a little scoring inside there but since I undid that it still fits in the nice so it's more than good enough for me So evidently, Illinois has some really weird laws about what paints can be imported or whatever. And so that's why it's almost impossible for me to find good paint. But at Rural King, I found this one little section that has paint for tractors. And that has some black enamel paint. So I guess I might try that. And when I'm done with this uh, WD-40 soaked cloth, I'll go wipe down my drill press with it. That should be a good use for this WD-40. So these still had some nasty black um, grease inside of them. So I really don't think any the person who restored this before, well, restored, really even took this apart. You know, I'm, I'm not going to use the original cotter pen. I'm just going to use a piece of wire. Oh, perfect. I really like having a few parts shiny and a few parts like a duller paint. I think it fits rather well. Good enough for me. Oh, I get it. These screws are where you put in the oil. Now that is pretty cool. Whoop. You didn't see that. And this is why I like oil, because it, it's a lot better than grease. It flows. Maybe some thinner oil would be good. Yeah. Okay, I'll go with some thinner oil. Let us try some sewing machine oil. Actually, wait. Forgive me that I, I put some more fuel in the wood stove and I didn't want it to overheat. I have a fan on. Let's try some sewing machine oil this time. It's a little better. I do really love this uh, oiler cap thing though, just using screws. It's, that's really smart. I doubt the person who restored it before me even knew what those were, judging by how gummed up it was. You know what? I'll put a, little, a couple drops of this into the main one too. Just to help loosen it up if there is any stress on it. Okay, that's really much, much better. 
So I will go with a lighter oil for those and then the thick gear oil for the, well, the gears. I guess that makes sense now that I think about it. Oh, I bent it a bit more. Maybe that can help. Oh, yes. Bending it a little bit helps a lot. No longer fighting it. Well, I, I guess that doesn't go to it. It's not the right size. Either way, I'm happy I picked it up. It's still cool. But I guess it doesn't go to this one after all. So my viewers were wrong. Ha ha. I'm getting excited. Oh, that's so perfect. I'm so happy with that. You know, I always have that issue with old grindstones. Sometimes they just like really fall apart and just a bunch of dust coming out. Although that might just be down to how old grindstones were. Or they're synthetic. And uh, they've gotten better over time, possibly. I don't feel like taking this apart, but I know I have to because this is seeming to be loose. That's, that's too loose for my taste. Okay, that's much better. Metal going everywhere. I need I need to draw it draw it down, but you know I don't want to draw it on my workbench. It's 1909 hardwood. Now it's just a matter of getting a handle going, and I think that might fit okay. So this is bent out. I'll have to get better at making these handles, but oh well. off a little bit off center but oh well eh, just barely I pilfered from a future inbox video because I have some end mills that should be good
See, it's just off-center of bent. I have never used an end mill before. Whoop. It's really bitey. Oh my god, that worked perfectly. A little bit more. Oh. Yes! Oh, it's beautiful. And now this is why I've saved all the um, machining type gifts for a future lathe inbox video. Because those are amazing of their own right. That was a bit tight, but I got it. Had to open up a little more, though. It'll do for now. But I'd like to find another nut so I can have them, well, tight against each other, away from the handle so the handle turns. Much better. Oh my god. But if only that turned. I'm going to sand it. This brush is all hardened up. It's funny. Oh well, I guess I forgot to wash it off. Had this inside for a day. Wasn't really enough to fully solidify the linseed oil, but oh well. Uh, something's definitely stuck on, so that's good. I'll probably remake this handle once I get better at woodworking. And not much, yeah, really not much oils come off, so that's good. Maybe it's better than I thought. And a lot of people complain about like, oh, linseed oil is so dangerous because it could catch fire. It's like, well, put it in your fireplace. Doesn't matter then. Oh, that's actually pretty dry. Never mind. I looked around and I was not able to find another nut. So this is kind of stuck on there. But oh well. And I've been looking it up and evidently that is the, or the original color. So maybe this is the original paint. It's just a bit a bit old and it easily wears off from my scrubbing. So I still might be interested in painting it. Pretty good new surface on there. I'm happy with that. All right, so it's not quite the greatest for sharpening an axe, but it does a pretty good job of doing a rough, a rough finish.
Might want to work on sharpening it more. Honing it, I guess. Oh well. I really do love its portability. And it looks like this actually is not unscrewing it too much. Yeah, since the end of the thread is kind of mushroomed over a little bit, it's difficult to get that nut undone, so it's actually fine like that. I do need, however, to tighten this down because I noticed whenever I went in reverse. The thing unspun. Now I'm mostly not going to use this for a grinder. I think I have a few spare wire wheels someplace. So I'll see if I'm hooking one of those up. That might be nice for just to quickly brush up some tools without having a big, nasty, loud beast of a machine running. But the thing I'm thinking about most is to have to put a pulley under here. Which I don't have any on hand. Something like that. Put a pulley under there and then have that pulley running to a generator, which would be a treadmill motor. And so this will be a hand crank electric generator. Wouldn't that be amazing? In fact, I might want to do that next because that could actually be pretty fun to see how to see how much energy you can make from that. I might need to tighten that up a bit more. Maybe those set screws kind of came undone, but oh well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya!